I personally liked Layla, but also it was what I grew up with again. Mm -hmm. Um, I have since come to like, obviously call her Aisha and like, that's all I call her. Um, but cause I don't want to get dragged by the fandom, but, um, <laughs> Hey there, welcome to the Wings Forever podcast. Join creator, host, and lifelong Wings fan Lola Valentine as she invites you to take a deep dive into the very cool universe of Wings Club. So whether you've been a Wings fan since 2004, or you vaguely remember the show from your childhood, or even if you're being introduced to it for the first time, welcome. This is the Wings Forever podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to the Winx Forever podcast. I'm your host, Lola Valentine, and today I am joined by my very cool friend, Stella, but you may know her as her Instagram name, Fairy of Magics. Stella, welcome to the show. Thanks for being on. Hi, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Wow, um, we've both got our coffees yes. and we are ready to talk about our favorite fairy show. So you grew up in Germany um, and I grew up in America and we both grew up watching Winx Club. Um, I, it's something that I always say, you know, the fandom is one of my most favorite parts of this series of this franchise, um, because it is just worldwide international. Like we have just this vast community of just a bunch of different people. Um, and yeah, do you remember the first time that you saw Winx Club? Yes, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was in 2004, July 13th because I remember it was the third episode of Wings and Wings aired in Germany on July 9th. So I was switching channels and there was this scene of Bloom, Stella and Flora in their rooms and Bloom was trying to change her hair color, but um, she couldn't make it. And she was then like, why you are at Althea? And that scene hit me. Like it was so random, but that scene hit me and I fell in love. Like I really had butterflies in my stomach and I knew no matter what it is, you will love it forever. Oh. And here I am. <laughs> wow, here you are 17 years later, yes. same as me. And it's what wild. Was it, what was it like in America for you? Wow, in America for me, um, Wings Club, obviously, it didn't have as large of a footprint as um, it did in Europe. So um so Winx Club came on not a uh, not a regular channel. It was on this special like public access channel that came on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the very, very first time that I ever saw anything Winx Club, I was at my dentist office. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was at my dentist office and I was looking through some of the magazines that were in the waiting room and there was a full page ad for Winx Club season one. And it was like premiering on the Fox box, which was the channel mm -hmm. that it was like the kid channel that it came on. And um, it was then later renamed for kids TV. And then even like it, it for kids TV and the whole thing is like kind of a mess, but um, it rebranded a lot while Winx Club was on its channel. Um, but I remember seeing that ad in the, in the magazine. And then like, a couple of days later, it was like Saturday morning. I was flipping through channels, kind of the same as you. And I saw um, this, this weird kind of like fairy show. And I was like, what is this? And it was like really bright and colorful. Um, I saw the Black Mud Swamp um, episode first. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny because I was talking with Jake a couple weeks ago. He was like, yeah, that was my least favorite. I was like, yeah, that was I one of my that. favorites. <laughs> Like that was one of my favorites because it was my like introduction to the show. Like I loved, um, like, you know, they're after this troll and like, there were these specialists, these heroes, but also fairies. Um, yeah, it was super, it was super cute. And like, um, I don't know, it was just like kind of magical. And then I showed it to my friend and she really liked it. And so we just kind of, we were like the only two kind of people that I knew mm. that, even knew about the show yeah. <laughs> because it came on such a weird oh I just hit it <laughs> because it came <laughs> I told you it happened <laughs> because it came on such a weird channel at such a weird time so like we were literally the only two people I knew in like my friend group that even knew about this show so it sometimes, was really funny sometimes I wonder what channels must think to 
show a new series around that time like everyone's probably oh, still God. sleeping and <laughs> so so you only um like could watch it on Saturdays yeah yeah it only came on Saturday morning so yeah. just one episode per week Mm -hmm. oh my yeah God. every week That's I was weird. looking forward to the next episode yeah it was super weird and it was it was also really weird because like all of the like girl shows mm -hmm. um like came on super early in the morning and it always made me so mad I was like why do I have to wake up early and none of the boys have to yes. wake up early to watch their favorite shows <laughs> so it was I was a feminist like even when I was nine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it start them young <laughs> but I remember that um Later the years, I think around season five, Nickelodeon showed the episodes also quite early in the morning here in Germany. Yeah, 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 man. Um, Wings Club kind of in America, like the licensing got passed around a lot. And so there was a time where um, I feel like it was probably... 2005 2006 when Cartoon Network got the licensing and mm -hmm. they would show it in the afternoons um like during the week um but they were just reruns like they weren't like new episodes or anything um and then but I would always watch it on there it was like some kind of like afternoon show that they had it was called like Mazungu or something and it was really weird um but uh yeah so like Cartoon Network had the licensing for a little bit And then, um, and then of course we all know what happened with the Nick deal. So <laughs> then Nickelodeon got it. We don't talk about that, but <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Um, what do you think kind of has like kept you so engaged with Winx Club and the fandom, like after all these years? So um, I think it's very personal. It's not, um, the main thing that the show went on but what I went through in my life with wings by my side and um, because of wings I had the chance to travel I got to know friends and they were always by my side when I was my lowest and they brought me up again and so this is like probably the main reason why I stayed because each time And for example, this time talking to you is one of my, my um, points where I remember if I would have ever quit, I wouldn't have had the chance to experience all of this. You know what I mean? Right. No, 100%. I absolutely, absolutely get that. Like, I feel like, I mean, a, a big part of like my own winks club journey if you will um was like I don't know I feel like a lot of it has put me on like the creative career path that I am on right now mm -hmm. like I was a writer growing up I wrote fan fictions for Winx Club I wrote for the Winx Club magazine like it was you know it was like such a big part of my life and like I just I went on to do like other creative projects and things and now here I am a marketer a digital yes. marketer you know like it's it just it fostered just this creative like soul in me I guess that um I've carried ever since yeah same with me first of all it was so cool that you had the chance to write for the magazine like <gasps> it was you, so much fun you also need to explain that to me because I wasn't very into the forum game back in the days I didn't understand mm -hmm. that I don't know why yeah but I didn't understand the <laughs> forum stuff but I also learned a lot about the things I do for a living today because of wings. Like I love yes. technology and I'm kind of creative, but more towards like, I'm a little tech now. I became a little tech now. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> that is like, if I never had got to know wings, I probably wouldn't do what I do. Right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, it's so cool to be able to look back on like both of our like, you know, childhoods and like growing up with Winx Club and seeing how like all of those dots start to kind of connect of like, well, if I didn't do this, then I wouldn't be here. And if I didn't do this, I wouldn't be here. Yes. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be here talking to you. And yes. it's wild, you know, like I have all these like new friends and stuff across the world. And it's like, so just fun. Like, I mean, I have, <laughs> I have a, um, a world clock on my on my iPhone of course mm -hmm. like everyone does but I like have all of the cities that like all my friends are in me too <laughs> so that, 
so that I can see what time it is for there. I'm like, it's so fun. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. So do you remember the first piece of merchandise that you yes. got for Winx Club? I have prepared something for you. Wait a second. So this was my first item. You can also see it in detail on my Instagram profile. This is a magazine. This is the first magazine from Wings, which was released in Germany. It's mm -hmm. by Panini. Maybe you know that brand. Oh. It's an Italian yeah. brand. And um, like you can see, it came on this huge cardboard thing. And yeah. as an extra, it has this purple bag. And this was my first item. I, I still remember the day when I saw this and when I got it. Yeah, oh, I love that so much. And yours? Um, so Wings Club didn't have a ton of stuff in America. Like when the the most like things that we had in America were, um, I mean, we had all the dolls, like all the Mattel dolls. And so my very very first Wings Club items were um, the Bloom and Techna Season One Mattel dolls. Wow. And I got them for Christmas. Yeah, I got them for Christmas in two thousand four. And um, they came with uh, these DVDs in America. Mm -hmm. um, and I want, it's like a promo DVD. So like it had all of the four kids dub actresses um, and actors like in it, um, you know, voicing the characters. And it was just a promo reel for, um, and it was all scripted for the, for the show. And I watched that thing so much. It's like a five minute, you know, little promo reel video, but it had two music videos in it. It talked about the Winx Club and each one's like powers and stuff. And like, oh, oh my, my gosh, I watched it so much. Was so it much. the same for Bloom and Techna or was it like a little bit personalized to each fairy? You no, know, it was, it was the same DVD. That would have been a great marketing thing yes. to click them like I know but yeah the, it was the same DVD for every so by the time I got all of the dolls I had five DVDs of these mm. <laughs> but I ended up keeping like two or three of them and I gave like two of them away to my friends that I really wanted them to watch the show <laughs> and I was like here's like a DVD of like you know like telling you all about the show if you want to like start watching it with me and my friend and I could never get anyone to to come over and watch it but you know, <laughs> their loss. <laughs> but speaking of the dolls, I think it's um, a little interesting to know that there are different types of box versions of the season yes. one dolls. There are three different versions. I like to call them the European version, the mm -hmm. South American version, and the American version, like the ones yeah. you had with the DVD. And the mm -hmm. European and South American versions are the same like yeah. from the positioning inside but the languages on the box right. is just different for it sure. was so interesting sure. like when i um, googled about the dolls i i found the different boxes and i was so confused so i needed <laughs> to search for them and find out everything yeah no definitely i um what's funny is that of course i was like nine when the show premiered like mm -hmm. eight or nine and um the the thing is, I didn't know that Winx Club was like an international show, probably until like the end of season three, um, when I started to get really big into the forums online. Um, the, uh, For Kids TV, the sh the channel that it came on in America, they had their own um, website, ForKids.TV, and it had um, so that was like the American forums. Um, and so they had a, a message board, you know, a, a, some forums where like, you could talk about all the shows on four kids TV, not just Winx club. But then I discovered like Winx club.com with all of the forums on there. Oh. And that's when I got involved with, with the, um, with the magazine and, and with Jake and all them. Um, and it was super fun. I had a like thread. <laughs> about um news about wings club and i would like report like all these news stories and stuff about like new stuff i feel like i was one of the first people to report that wings club was getting a movie um oh my God. Lost Kingdom. <laughs> where did you find that out <laughs> um i had a inside like person like that i would 
like communicate to with what? with rainbow oh yeah it was god. it was via because email and forum? i would mm-hmm. oh my god yeah yeah so it was it was via email and i would i would email rainbow this person at rainbow and then i'd be like hey like because because what really set me on this like path was i was distraught because um for kids tv lost the licensing to to produce wings club and so i thought that season three was it like I just did it again that season three was it that mm-hmm. I thought that season three was like going to be the last season of Wings Club because that's how it was advertised it was ad- advertised <clears throat> excuse me it was advertised that it was the series finale and then that was it and I was like that can't be right <laughs> so I start I like took to the forums to like discover that no it's actually like still really big in Europe and um, I think, and then I started uncovering, like, they're making a, a movie, they're making a fourth season, you know, all this stuff. And so, um, yeah, I was able to report that back to not only my American online friends and the American forums, but then also in the European forums um, on my news channel. So it was really, it was a really fun time. <laughs> that is so interesting. And I think it must have been around 2007 and eight when you get to know about it. And I wasn't like active on the internet in that time. So I was only by myself hyping wings club, but that is so cool to know. I miss so much. (laughs) It was a fun time and I really missed um, the old forums. There was also, do you remember, um, I don't know if when this would have been, it was probably like, 2009 to 2010 or 11 maybe on weeksclub.com they had that like whole like um it was like a game almost but you could interact with other players but with um, given answers and questions gardenia yes. park yes yes yes, yes i park. love that game so much same oh my gosh i was obsessed and it was my favorite thing um, I'd got my first like laptop around that time. And so, and I remember, oh my gosh, I remember when I was like 12, like thinking like, man, I really wish that I had like my own laptop, my own computer that I can do all my wing sculpt stuff on, you know, like, cause I was using my family computer and there was limitations obviously because like my family, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was so funny because once I finally did get my own computer was when I was like playing Gardenia Park when I was like reporting for the magazine and so all this stuff it was just like such a dream that my like little like bitty self like so many years back was like only dreaming that I would have and then I Mm. finally got it and it was just super fun (laughs) wow I feel like that time of the website was like their highest time there was oh, like, yeah. I remember that I noticed, um, I went like onto the Wings website every day. And then I saw that the Italian website was changing their design. And I was like, not with me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat down and screenshotted every single yes. freaking page. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I used to, so... Um, you probably know this since you're a, a tech person, but so Adobe canceled um, Flash, mm. Flash animation. Mm-hmm. So Flash is no longer supported by Adobe, which is super sad because I would use um, the Wayback Machine. Yes. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah. So I would use the Wayback Machine. It, it like is an archive. It's an internet archive of just websites on yes. the internet. And so I would use it to go back and reminisce and look at all of the old um, Flash websites that Winx Club was ever on. So like the 4Kids TV website, the winxclub.com website, like back in way back in the day. And it was so sad because I logged on to it probably this past January for this show. Yes. And um, and it was canceled and it was like, I can't see anything anymore. I'm like, this is so sad. I had the same trouble as you just a few weeks ago when I realized that I didn't screenshot the Winx Power Show website and I was like why did I didn't I do it and so um luckily I have a colleague who is in the IT part of our 
uh, company. And so I was like, can you maybe help me because of the flash player problem and the way back yeah. machine. And he was like, okay, he was sitting there with me and um, looking for an old browser and an old um, flash player yes. thing. And so I installed it and I screenshot it as much as I oh could. My. And so I was able to save it. Now I have everything, oh my, my website screenshot collection complete. <laughs> That's so great. I love that. I maybe I'll hit you up then if you've got a way a way around that because mm -hmm. um on the on the four kids TV website, um it was I mean it was pretty minimal, but um it didn't have nearly as many things as the Winx Club website had. But what it did had and what I absolutely loved, and I was able to save some of them um from that time, but what I absolutely loved was each um character's profile kept a journal. And oh. so they would post each week new journal entries. And so they're like journal entries written from like the official like Winx Club members, like talking about like Bloom's birthday, like talking about like going on break and coming back, like just their life at Althea and like talking about things that were in season one and season two, but like um, kind of like the in-between time of wow. like what happened in between the episodes. It was so fun like I have a couple of excerpts that I'll have to like send you because they're like they were my favorite um I copy and pasted like as many as I could at the mm -hmm. time um and I my my intention was to always go back and like save all of them but I obviously ran out of time <laughs> because who would have thought <laughs> I remember that website I was on that um site as well but um I think they had like a region blocker because um, mm. there was a voice sometimes saying when I wanted to play a video, this content is currently not available. And me with not knowing English, I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> that was creepy. But so funny. <laughs> today I understand. And I really liked that website, but it was a little bit strange to me because it looked so much more different than what Wings oh, yeah. looks in Europe. Yes. Yes, definitely, definitely did. And like, um, that was kind of like a lot of, um, I didn't even, I guess it was when Secret of Lost Kingdom came out that I didn't realize um, that there were so many different, I mean, for one, like Winx Club has since aired in over 250 countries. Like, that's incredible. Um, I didn't realize like how many dubs there were and how many different variations of Winx Club there was like we had um I mean to me to me uh four kids will always like be my favorite because that's what I grew up with but yes. I do know that it like derived a lot from the original source material like from the original Italian from the original Ray like English it was very like there were a lot of liberties taken with it and I understand that now but like back in the day I was like why is Layla called Aisha <laughs> I was like so tilted <laughs> but um in Germany she's also called Layla so really yeah I think Interesting. I think Italy and probably Turkey they yeah. must they are probably the only countries which have their original name I don't know why they changed it I don't either I liked I mean I I personally liked Layla but also it was what I grew up with again mm -hmm. um I have since come to like obviously call her Aisha and like that's all I call her um but because I don't want to get dragged by the fandom but um <laughs> You're listening to the Wings Forever podcast. Um, what is your favorite part about kind of the Winx Club community as a whole? Um, I think it's that we come together and share our love for Wings. Like we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like the best part about the internet. Like you can come together and share your experiences your thoughts your love you can find new friends but obviously to the light side there's also a dark side but right we just want to talk about positive things <laughs> I know I feel like I get very hung up on like a lot of the 
like problematic things with the franchise and how many things I disagree with, with like their rainbows decisions on, on some of the things that they do. Um, but yeah, like it, there's no really need in like getting hung up too much on that because of how much Winx Club means to me and a bunch of other people. Like um, I don't think that as, as bad as the franchise, like has gotten over the last several years and like um, as like, problematic as it's you know become um I don't think that it would ever anything that they could ever do would take away that magic from me honestly Mm, same well I have uh some rapid fire questions for you if you would like um before we go on a quick break so are you ready yeah I hope so (laughs) (laughs) all right here we go who's your favorite Winx member at the moment Stella but it changes over the time favorite season season one favorite specialist or male warrior Brandon favorite movie I think secret of the lost kingdom but in the past week I watched magical adventure and I laughed my ass off (laughs) (laughs) Uh, favorite transformation Mm, Billy Vix I think because sometimes I think it's underrated and I like um, the meaning behind it yeah uh least favorite transformation Cyrenix. <laughs> yes <Girl same. laughs> uh, favorite romantic relationship brandon and stella because i think they are the most real couple realistic couple you know what i mean yeah yeah i absolutely know what you mean um favorite villain the tricks and favorite live tour that's difficult. We have um, <laughs> the Italian Wings Power Show, the Netherlands Wings on Tour, and the yep. Italian Wings on Ice. But there are several other live tours which not came out on DVD. Yeah. But if I have to decide um, for the music and the overall look, I think I would go for the Wings on Tour. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Great. Well, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will dive even deeper into our topic, Growing Up Weeks Club. If you're enjoying this episode of the Wings Forever podcast, follow the show on your favorite streaming platform so that you're notified when new episodes are released. And we're back with our fairy fabulous friend, Stella, otherwise known as Fairy of Magics. Now, you and I are both newer friends. Um, We met this year over Instagram, and I am so glad that we did. I love getting to see all the unique posts that you share um, about just like the things that you collect and all of your live show merch. Um, Were you able to see any of these shows in person? Sadly not, because um, on one side, I was probably too young to, like, get to know about it in the right time. The first right. show is Italian, so I I saw it on YouTube, but it was after it was released. And I right. knew about the Netherlands uh, Wings on Tour when it was still a tour. Yeah. But I mean, we weren't living far away from the Netherlands, but I was too scared to ask my parents if we could drive there because none of us were able to speak English or to have like the ability to know what to do in the country. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I was scared. And um, in 2008, there was uh, Wings on Ice, but I didn't know about it. So, okay. I think it was, was it 2008? Yeah. It was that two- sounds about right. Yeah. yeah because it, it was, was like right year. when and Elisa Rosali was brought in to do the music for um, like Secret of Lost Kingdom and then um, the Winx Club in concert. Um, so, and she had a couple of songs on the live on the um, Winx on Ice, right? No. <laughs> no, she didn't? No, it was what Winx is, in concert. Is- it was but, just Wings and Concert? Yeah, but the thing is, um, I just looked it up a few days ago. I was also very confused by the Wings on Ice and Wings and Concert. Like Wings on yeah. Ice, Wings and Concert, and the fourth season was like it was all it was like yeah. the ball, like just so it was club together. Yeah. yeah, it was like so much happening in that time. And so I always mix it up in my head. But yeah. um 
the only like the song Isonia Modo Mio is part of the Wings in Concert and so right this is probably where we like to connect Wings on Ice and Wings in Concert because of that video right yes and yeah. this goes hand in hand with the first movie somehow because of the animation yeah. set. and <laughs> so those years are like it's just like one big thing for me Right. Yeah. I mean, it was the, it was the years that like, I feel like Winx Club was in its prime. Yeah. Like they had just come off of their first movie. Like their animation style was amazing for that time. Like it was just like, and it was all consistent. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was all consistent all the way through. Like, um, I feel like that was like such a great time. And yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but you've actually uploaded all these shows to your YouTube channel now so that we can actually watch them in full. Yes. I hope that's you enjoy super them. great super exciting yeah that's such a like what a like great service to the Winx Club community that you've provided <laughs> yeah as long as YouTube um doesn't block it like I always um make a check beforehand before I post things yes. so everything For works sure. out but with the shows um luckily it's going well so far and Good. also um I feel like the shows are quite underrated in the fandom like how oh, was yeah. it how was it for you when did you get to know about the shows like I knew the shows right right in the years where they came out but I never was aware yeah. about the dates they were like happening right like, how was it for you um because I was pretty active on the um UK version of the of the Winx Club website um I knew kind of about the Winx Power Show but it, only after it had happened I didn't know that it you know was a thing until um a couple years later but um and then the wings on ice kind of like what you're saying like it was around that same time that it was all like a bunch of stuff was happening in the fandom so I knew about that um but yeah it was um it it wasn't a thing obviously in in America um we didn't like Winx Club pretty much became irrelevant in America after 2006 um that's when yeah yeah (laughs) wait yeah but season three was airing in 2007 season three aired in no because the because the movie came out in 2007 in italy yeah season season three premiered well maybe it was also in italy it was also 2007 and also in Germany in that time they had like quite um, um it was like it aired in Italy and a few months later it would have aired in Germany so I remember right. that yeah. yeah um was it in, was the movie in theaters for you yes oh, and for you so no no it never it never came to the the only time we got any of the movies like in america officially were um in the nickelodeon era when nickelodeon redubbed them and aired them on tv Mm -hmm. like we didn't have any of them in the theaters it was so sad i i remember watching like the like live stream of the premiere um of the like sacred lost kingdom premiere like i watched it on like youtube or something and it was like so fun and i was like why is none of this in america i was so upset like i was like europe gets all the cool things and america just i don't know it was just funny because like yeah the licensing for the wings club like in america ended in like 2006 2007 and then the and then i knew about the movie was happening but i didn't get any of the merchandise i didn't get any of the like I don't have any Secret of Lost Kingdom stuff. Like all of my Winx Club merch ends with season three, which is very sad. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, there was a lot of disadvantages of being a Winx Club fan in America. <laughs> mm. But um, the live stream you were talking about, was it from Italy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I didn't know anything that they were saying. <laughs> but but it, how did but you it had like... like- why where was I where was I <laughs> I don't remember how I knew about it either but um but yeah it was it showed like the red carpet and like all the winks like um the, uh the actresses that um that were portraying the winks club characters yes. on the red carpet oh, oh it was so fun and yes. then they did the same they did the same thing for um magical adventure um and they like had the you know the actor and actress that played um 
that were portraying Stella, not Stella. Oh my God. Bloom and sky. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was super magical. And I just remember like thinking like how sad I was that it was never going to come to America. And then when Nickelodeon got the rights, like they just aired them as TV specials. They weren't ever like anything big. So it was very sad. <laughs> mm. I also remember that on the German version of the movie DVD, there is a special and I didn't know about it. I was so sad when I saw it on DVD that there was also a premiere in Germany for the movie in oh. Munich. It's Munich is like 800 kilometers, 600 I don't know, oh, wow. from my home. Okay. So it, it's quite far away. But yeah. Eugenio and his wife were there and I was like, oh. where was I? <laughs> I was yeah. so sad but but we were also like what 12 or 13 when it came out yeah so. I was 13 years old yeah yeah so I mean yeah we were children <laughs> and the sad Little thing baby. is even in that time when I was 13 watching the movie I was probably the oldest child there oh 100 <laughs> oh that's so funny well I mean gosh I bet, I bet though it was so magical, like watching like your fairies that you grew up with, like just on the like big screen, like on like I in was the movies. Having goosebumps all the time. <sighs> like there was like I won't ever forget how I felt sitting there. And like, you know, sitting in the cinema having this big screen and those large speakers which let the room vibrate. Yeah. Like mm, oh, there was so chills magical I love that and like um <laughs> that's so different from when I first saw the movie when I first saw the movie it was a bootleg copy on YouTube of <laughs> the Italian version so yeah. I didn't understand anything that was happening but I was just so elated that I was able to watch it you know in any form so I had watched that it was like an illegal yeah like video of like probably the the cinema screen mm -hmm. like <laughs> It was, it was such bad quality, but like, I was just happy that I had access to watch it in some form. Um, but then of course they uploaded the Cineloom English dub to YouTube years later and or I was able to watch that, but super weird. <laughs> What's your favorite piece of Winx Club merchandise that you own and why? This is a very difficult question because I have a lot of it. Clearly. <laughs> I think the most emotional thing I have is probably my first item, which is the magazine. Because yeah. mm, with that, everything started. And also maybe my first doll, which was Icy. But you, yes. Yeah, but... I again prepared something for you. Oh no, wait a second. I forgot to say oh. that um, I think um, the most important merch we got in the fandom is the music. Oh, yes. Yeah. And speaking Honestly. of that, I, okay. um, I don't know if you know this, but I got two tattoos of the way yes. songs I have on my yeah. arm. I have to poi credere in te from the first movie and on my left yeah. arm I have Mentre Mondo Gira from the second movie oh, I so love you it. can see that the music means a lot to me yes and um, what I prepared for you I thought about this and since we are talking about America and for kids and so on yes I had like this cool memory in my head that someone called Michael from Michael's Wings Club. Do you know him? I know him, yes! <laughs> he is iconic. Sadly, he deleted his website because yeah. of, like it cost money and so on. But um, we became quite close friends and he was so kind to send me something a few years <gasps> ago. And he sent me this fairy couture bloom bag he got from, I think it was licensing expo from rainbow I love because it. because he helped um tidying up the booth and yeah. also something you can't you you can't buy this book it's a notebook with stella fairy couture 
Oh and my goodness. on the back, on the back, you have uh, the address of Rainbow. Incredible. Uh, you also got it there, and it's like empty. It's just a notebook, and so uh, yeah, I think that's it's very, so very cool. Special. That is so special. Yes. Wow. How like, kind of him. That is so is, nice. This is um in like my fairy couture corner right there. Yeah. But... <laughs> I love it. How many like um you probably I don't know do you catalog your Wings Club stuff like how many things do you have of Wings Club just in total? I started um to like write down everything with my like fifth doll. But wow. I mean, I was 10, I was 10 years old, right. <laughs> but at one point I stopped. I like have a, an incomplete list about all of the German magazines. I have an incomplete list about my dolls. And sometimes I have written down certain things, but at one point I stopped doing it. But I, I, yeah. like, I like know, probably know everything I have. Yeah. Awesome. Um, gosh, how many magazines do you have? We didn't get, okay. Well, I will say we got like maybe the first like 10 issues of the magazine in America, but like they're all season one. Like we, I only have one of them, um, which is very sad. Um, but so like we didn't, we don't have any other access to yeah any of the other magazines uh, mm -hmm. for the Wings Club. So in Germany, we have like over a hundred. I think it was maybe two or three years ago when the hundredth issue was released, which was a lie. Yeah. <laughs> I counted, I counted the magazines and it was like, I think it was issue 99 or 101. Oh I don't remember, but it was not the hundredth magazine. Um, hilarious we only got um four magazines by panini in 2004 to 2006 then it yeah. stopped and then a new uh company publisher uh released the magazines in august 2007 and since then okay. it continued until this day incredible but wow. the quality the quality is like not the same anymore Right. And uh, we only get every like second month a new magazine. And okay. yeah, the past years it was like each month. Sometimes we had 13 magazines a year. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> what was your favorite memory growing up with Wings Club? Like, is there um a specific like moment in time or something that just stands out to you. Like for me, um, one of my favorite like all time memories is um, like Winx Club reminds, especially like the early seasons remind me of like summertime. And like, they remind me of like hanging out with like my then like elementary school best friend. And we were um, like sitting on my back deck. Like we had just gotten out of the pool swimming, like pretending we were like Winx Club mermaids or something. And like, I don't know, just we were, we were sitting up beside the pool, like drawing our favorite Winx Club characters. Like I drew a picture of Stella that I think I still have somewhere. Like, it's just, it was so like, I don't know. It just reminds me of just like being just young and like, um, I don't know. It's just magical. Like, it just makes me happy to think about. That's so cute. <laughs> um, I have several things I like to think about, but most of them are not growing up, but the past years, but yeah. growing up, it's, it's probably playing with the dolls and like diving yeah. into my own magical world and going into the toy shops and having like wings <sighs> everywhere. It was like heaven. Yes. And um, one thing um, which was in 2011 was my first visit in the rainbow magic land. Like it was just two months crying after it opened and <gasps> it wasn't everything finished but this this is probably like the most emotional thing to me oh, oh my gosh that is my like that was my dream to yeah. go there and I am just devastated that that they tore down Althea Castle like it makes me yes. like emotional to think about that I'll never be able to to visit it like 
Uh, it literally is that reel that I posted on Instagram. Like I like all growing up, like thought like, you know, when I get an adult job, I can do whatever I want and I can go to Italy and go to rainbow magic land. Oh, how sad. I mean, I can still go, but like, what, what would be the point? <laughs> it's just magic land, not rainbow magic yes. land anymore. <laughs> I knew that so feeling. Sad. Yep. Oh man. Do you have any, um, did you get anything cool at rainbow magic land? Yeah some some stuff and the first time I was there I only grabbed um tissues <laughs> with believe okay. on them a little figure Cute. of Musa's love and pet people yeah and um I think it it's an it's it was ice cream it was not from the rainbow magic land but it was okay since I was in Rome I was like looking out for wing stuff it yeah. was just a little cup of ice cream with Flora in her like um fruity music bar outfit yeah and there was a little puzzle inside of techno Belivix. That's but cute. i was in 2018 and 19 i was again at the magic land so i grabbed here and there some things ah oh, that's so amazing that's so uh i love it so much <laughs> You obviously um, grew up with the German dev of Winx Club, which I was just clued in by um, by Cuba 016 um, has the best opener like yes. of, it. I, I'd never heard it until like a couple weeks ago. Like it's hands down the best theme song we have for the for the whole series and I can't believe it took me this long to listen to it <laughs> yes I can tell you um a little thing about it it's um just a theory but it's um it, it sounds logic to me so uh -huh. the song we're speaking of is called heller als licht which means brighter than light and okay. it's sung it's sung by the um, singer Petra Schäser. And at okay. that time, Wings was airing on the channel RTL2, RTL2. And in that time, they had like this anime theme going on. It was just yeah. um, animes. And the singer sung like probably every opening on that channel wow okay and i think it was like a thing from rtl2 to do this to any show because i yeah. think that also detective conan has another opening in germany yeah and they have in japan for example so wow. i think it was like a thing going on there and i also didn't know it because when i got my first radio play of wings do you call it radio yeah. play it was, uh, on, it was on cassette it was on cassette back in the days so oh, I, wow. I put it I put it into my recorder and I played it and suddenly there wasn't the opening brighter than light but it was like the regular opening we know yeah and I was so confused I was like I think again 10 years old but that was the first time I realized we exclusively have a different opening and that was quite cool yeah yeah I know um yeah the four kids version had um a different opening as well and it was um kind of kind of the same um it was by a different band um that kind of did a lot of other kids shows theme openings um and yeah and they did all the music for for the winx club dub the winx club for kids dub um so i didn't have any of the like original songs either which is mm. sad how familiar are you with the american version of winx club because i know nothing uh, obviously about the German dub um because I just learned that y'all had a different opening that was amazing so <laughs> um I know like probably everything I would say I didn't watch every episode I have prepared again something for you I um started to collect the DVDs I from season one I, those only, too. I only have this and I know that this is like the um England version UK version because yeah. there's only a second DVD in blue which I'm missing but it has the four kids episodes wow. on this DVD yeah. and the original American version is like these DVDs this volume two and volume four I'm missing the other ones and they come yeah. like white boxes and yep. I have um complete season two and I'm oh, looking yes I have that 
collect the rest, obviously. So I watched the episodes and I know that they made several changes, which Mm -hmm. I don't really understand. (laughs) Because why would you why would you change a show so much? And why did Rainbow accept that? Were they in need to like that they really wanted to put it out in America, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that was the thing with a lot of four kids dubs of shows so four kids took a lot of other shows as well and edited edited wow edited them very heavily um to be more um like attractive i guess to an american audience so Mm -hmm. for instance um they did a dub of pokemon um and instead of uh like some episodes like there's like a couple of episodes where like they eat sushi and stuff and instead of sushi they have like hamburgers or like you know stuff like that so it's like yeah so it's very different um they I feel like that was their way to help market it better towards an American audience for some reason Mm -hmm. but it's so it's so funny to me um I mean why else what yeah why else would they would they have done yeah what they did to it but um I feel like to, for me, the four kids dub though, like the voice directing in it is very good because I feel like the pacing is, it makes sense. Like it just, it's, it feels a little like more put together, I guess, mm-hmm. a little more thought out um, than the other like dubs that I've seen, um, like the the English dubs that I've seen. Like it's not, um, I don't know. I feel like there's a bunch of awkward pauses in the original English dub, Um that there aren't really in for kids um but yeah a lo- lot of weird things like like they changed um domino domino was uh sparks, sparks. Mm-hmm. and yes. then um freaking oh um they made musa like a princess like they they okay. like mm-hmm. so in my mm-hmm. um in my dvd of uh the promo dvd that came with the the dolls yeah she she calls herself princess musa and the worlds are different that they're from um she is from the harmonic nebula in mm. four kids tv and um techna is from uh the third vector of the binary galaxy fun fact <laughs> Um, I think that was also used at one point in Germany. Oh, really? Wait, wait a second. Wow. Or was it? Or was it the part in season one where Loom said she was Miranda? Um, that that was also in yeah the four kids version. I'm so confused, but it sounds familiar to me. But maybe I mix it up. <laughs> I have I have two things. Uh-huh. Um, first, I wanted to show you some nostalgic. I got it as well from Michael. oh my gosh it's also like a promo dvd i guess Mm -hmm. and on the back is also brats i saw you posted about brats brats and magical do re me and it's got one piece and gi joe and sonic gosh i watched all of these growing up oh my gosh that's so funny oh my god i I think it's so cool to have something like this in my collection yes that's amazing um i have like a fun fact for you Go for it. Um, when we had in Germany the commercials for the Mattel dolls, it was like the only commercial we had of Wings except wow. for the magazines. Yeah. They still used the intro, the four kids intro, the melody of it. <laughs> the we are the Winks, we are the Winks, yes. that one. <laughs> but, they, but they put like German text over it, matching right. for the dolls, obviously. And I was like, oh my God, that's so catchy. I like it. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Then... Um, a few years later, the first season game was released for PC, PlayStation, yes. and Game Boy Advance. And I have it for Game Boy Advance and my friend had it for Same. PlayStation, which is by now in my collection because she gifted yes. it. But <laughs> so nice. I noticed for the first time that the music in those games is like nothing what I've ever heard in connection to Wings. And um, it was a little weird because I, I think the American music is not equal to the European music. You know what I mean? Yeah. It has like so different sounds. It feels mm-hmm. so different to me. Yeah. And um, it took me some time. And I think it was around that time when Mattel released the Sensational Dolls. Yes. We only got Bloom, Stella and Flora and you and oh, I wow. got all six. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. and um they also sing the four so, kids songs i know yes. all of them because i because i have like the full versions from itunes do you remember yes. yeah <laughs> and and i don't know like having the dolls and uh, i i went on youtube and then i suddenly found out that there was another version of wings and i was so confused <laughs> like my english i was like 12 13 years old right there was like the four kids version which was so strange to me because the music was completely different and i was completely like completely different mm -hmm. yeah not but even on the, the other same. hand there was like this video wings club ray english and i was like what the hell is ray <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and i was so confused <laughs> since so many years but then i understood everything and i yeah. need to say that um the song magic in my heart sung by musa was like back in the years I um, spent a lot of time taking pictures of flowers and so on and yeah. that was like my name for the pictures oh and it was also my first idea for my tattoos oh yeah. I wanted to get magic in my heart since so many years but now I like passed this idea yeah <laughs> but this is but now you can see that um for kids for me is a big part of Wings. It became yeah. a big part. And I couldn't even imagine the fandom or the, the Wings community without the four kids stop. Yeah, honestly. I mean, same, but I grew up with it. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that that's kind of how I was when I discovered that Ray English dub was a thing. Um, I was I was the exact same. I was like, I what is this? And then I came to realize that it was the like actual like you know or the original english version of like the close like it's the closest thing to the original to the original italian you know dub that we have and i was like if i don't i don't think that if i grew up with a different version that i would be the the super fan that i am today <laughs> like I, I i truly think that like i mean the the act the voice acting and and the for kids dub like it just was to me like so good and like um they talked like real people like during that time you know what I mean like they talked like real mm -hmm. teenagers um and it was really it was really fun um very funny fact I follow the original voice actress for Stella from the four kids dub <laughs> on Instagram and she's a personal chef now in New York <laughs> wow yeah super random like she still does voice acting i guess but um she yeah she does she she cooks a lot and so i see her like yummy looking recipes all the time I'm like oh i should make that <laughs> you know? but um it'd be super like interesting to get like somebody from the old four kids dub like on the show and like ask them about oh, their yes. time on the show yeah um, that would be very cool. random <laughs> To me, I have to say, um, I personally didn't like the American voice acting because I think it's not that they did a bad job, but for us, especially in Germany, we are like more calmed down and American people are like louder and they express themselves a little more. You know what I mean? Comparing yeah. to the Ray English dub, the voices are more toned down and not so quaky. <laughs> Yes. You know yeah. Mean? Yeah. But um if they're a little like, calmer. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're listening to the Wings Forever podcast. Who is your favorite voice actor from the German version of Wings Club and what did you like about them? So, in general, I like all the voice choices because I think they fit their characters perfectly but um, I think the voices I feel the most comfortable with when I hear them are from Stella and Bloom. Yeah, I think Stella has like one of a kind voice. You would recognize her no matter what she would synchronize, you know what yeah. I mean? And um, of uh, the actresses were having their first jobs with Wings. Mm -hmm. And um, a little fun fact. I the love voice your fun actress, fact. <laughs> the voice actress of Bloom is also synchronizing Molly Quinn in Castle. And you know yeah, that yeah. Molly Quinn did Bloom. Yeah. And also she uh, gave her voice to Ariana in Victorious. And Ariana mm -hmm. did Diaspora. Mm -hmm. So that's. That's like a little circle. Yeah. You know? 
<laughs> that's very funny how how funny wow like it's kind of like the degrees of separation <laughs> yeah they're all kind of connected that's great and what about you I mean you have several voices to choose from I think several yes um what's really funny is that I, as you probably know in season three they completely changed the voice of techno really? yeah for for four kids yeah so for kids okay. tv they changed completely the voice of techna and then also in two episodes the voice of stella which was so weird um yeah it was just two episodes and then they brought the original stella voice back and i was like mm -hmm. what the crap was that you know <laughs> like um so it would be really interesting to ask um to ask about that and like be like why was this episode of wings club just one episode different like and it was jarringly different like it was not like oh it's kind of different like no it was like extremely different um but i think that my favorite voice actors um from the show obviously i love lisa ortiz like they're like her voice acting is iconic and she she did so many other like voices for some of the other cartoons that are iconic but she did misa and icy and um a couple of other ones in the show but those are the main characters that she voiced was musa and icy they're just like very iconic to me and then obviously bloom's voice was like it's my favorite bloom voice like of the whole franchise so yeah yeah you were talking about the four kids or the nickelodeon oh no the four kids i don't like <laughs> <laughs> No, Sorry. oh, <laughs> no, you're, you're good. You're good. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> it's so bad because like, I, the, I will say the Nickelodeon dubs were not that bad. Like I loved the voice actresses. They were so sweet. And, um, I loved Kiki Palmer as Ayusha. Um, freaking Romy Dames is, is a great Misa. Like she was, she was so good. Um, and she was so sweet. I still am like friends with her on Facebook and stuff, but she like oh. would, she, she would give me like exclusive like interviews for the magazine and stuff. And oh it was just God. like, it was just like super fun. I also like interviewed very briefly. I interviewed Molly Quinn and Ariana Grande. <laughs> when, <laughs> what, what? For, 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 for an article in the magazine. And it was just like a questionnaire with all three of them um, about like, their characters and stuff um but it was a super short it was over like email so um i didn't get to like talk with them like one-on-one -on -one, but yeah it was very funny um thinking about it now i'm like casual <laughs> you know yeah. i i also wanted to ask you how it was for you having like those celebrities doing the wings because um I knew Ariana and Liz Gillis from Victorious. It yeah. aired also in Germany. Also, I knew Kiki Palmer and Molly Quinn and so on. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, even if I also know them and I I saw and heard that Liz Gillis was singing a new song, yeah, it felt a little strange to me. But since you are hearing their original voices on a regular basis, yeah. Um, how was it for you? Um, I loved Victorious growing up and I always thought that um, Liz Jills was like the like strongest singer on Victorious. I mean, Ariana mm -hmm. Grande and her combined, obviously, but definitely yeah. um, Elizabeth. And so um, it was very funny to like, of course, Nickelodeon was going to bring in star power, you know, like that. Um, and Ariana wasn't really like she was kind of like coming into like what she is now like she was like at her like first like beginnings of her like pop star like stardom um so it was very funny seeing um I don't know like it's funny when I mentioned to other people like oh yeah like Ariana Grande voiced a character on Wings Club casually and they're like mm. really I'm like yeah it was like a long time ago <laughs> you know like before she was Ariana Grande really um and now even Kiki Palmer has like popped off but she was like probably the most famous one out of all of mm. like the main six girls because like whenever the cast would do like viewing parties or get togethers or stuff like you know um they would all get together but Kiki was never like involved because she was like doing so many other things um so mm. yeah so that was really interesting um but yeah it, it, it was cool though um I loved that you know of course Romy Dames was on Hannah Montana mm -hmm. um and so uh that was super funny yeah that also blew my mind because I loved Hannah Montana yeah same. that was so cool I was like I was like 
Hmm. I don't like her character in Hannah Montana, so I was a little yeah. bit not Skeptical. feeling so well. But but yeah. she's like one of the kindest. I feel like. Oh, yeah, she she for sure was. I remember in my original like ask for her to like be in this article that I had written, and which is so funny. I remember talking to her and was like this could be like a major turning point for my writing career or something like that. And it was so, I was so dramatic and like, it was just so funny. Cause I was like, well, I mean, thinking about it now, like, you know, it might've been, you know, like kind but of. Who can say that about themselves? That's true. That's true. <laughs> I don't know if we've discussed this. What were your like thoughts on fate, the Wink saga? Like how, how did you feel like watching it and do you think that like this new era of Winx Club with Fate has like kind of helped save Winx Club in terms of the show being relevant and successful again? So when I first heard about Fate um, I, I think I'm not that person who is sitting down and finding out everything about something new. I was yeah. just like leaning back and waiting for everything to happen. Yeah. So I was watching it with no expectation. That's and, probably the um, best way to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was like complaining, this is not wings, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yes, because that's not wings. So right. why are you why why are you mad? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was watching it, and I was I was into it so much that I watched it three times. But now my hype is like over. I know until season two comes out. <laughs> yes, but it's a good it's a good series. Yeah, I think it's I, a very good series if you don't compare it to the Wings and if you don't yeah. have any expectation. And I think you shouldn't compare those theories no. to each other. Yeah. And um, obviously it helped to push Wings because there, was, there were so many people on TikTok talking about Wings again and pretending mm -hmm. they would be number one fans and not knowing anything about it. <laughs> Yeah, like the they watched 17. like season one when they were nine. <laughs> yes, and they'd be yeah. like, "Oh my god, I love wings and so on." And ah, uh, there were some people I yeah, forget yeah. it. But I think the hype now fell down, and um, so everything is like it was before. Yeah. And um, I think if Rainbow really wanted to push only wings as a um, brand mm. have done other marketing steps oh yeah oh yeah but but I think Eugenio wanted to make a live action series so he's allowed to do it oh yeah 100 yeah and um, also like you also know that um, they are planning on changing their marketing strategy for wings towards yeah. older audiences like I'm very excited for that yeah I'm very curious to see yeah how it will play out um I don't have high expectations I'm kind of coming into mm -hmm. it with like no expectations because of yeah you know. like I'm having I'm having no expectations since probably season five <laughs> so <laughs> so this is why I'm not yeah. complaining so much <laughs> I'm just going with everything they're giving us and I yeah. and I always try to see the good things yeah. because also it is so easy to talk about negative things. It is oh, so 100%. easy to find something you don't like and mm -hmm. this is not good enough, that is not good enough. But what people, I feel like what people don't see, I mean, I don't want to judge about anyone, mm -hmm. but people don't see that this is a company. They want to make money. They need to make money. Otherwise, they can't survive as a company. Yeah, they they but, they have to make smart business decisions to yes, stay and, relevant. And, and I don't know, I don't know how they are how they are working in the company. What their goals are, what they right, what, what they are targeting, and so I I am not the one to judge. Like, am I even allowed to judge? Like, yes. Yeah. Speaking speaking of the uh, Bershka, Bershka release. Yeah. I mean, this is like, calm down. This is only the first thing we saw. This women top with wings. Like oh. everyone is complaining. This is not. Uh, this is not unisex, and this is not. I was one um, of those people. 
<laughs> yeah, don't don't worry. It's totally yeah. fine. Yes, it's yeah. true. It's true. But wait, wait until everything is released. Until everything is released. You, yeah, then you can complain. So <laughs> I I even won't wear it. Like oh, this yeah. is nothing I would wear. But the the thought of it that they bring it back, trying to make it a little bit bit more popular for like mm -hmm. older fans. That's the the posi the positive whole... thing yeah you know yeah for and sure. sometimes sometimes people are immediately mad yeah and don't some, some appreciate, people yeah you know yeah 100 some people just yeah choose to be mad <laughs> uh, they wake up and they choose anger <laughs> <laughs> oh no i 100 feel that and i was the same way like watching winx club like I know like a lot of it was a lot of nostalgia bait, but like, man, I fell into it like so hardcore. Like I loved it. Like I love Faith the Wink Saga. Like it was like, I mean, obviously there are some things problematic with it, but those aside, like it was just the coolest thing for me was here's a show about my like life long obsession with an Italian made cartoon now materialized into this live action show that like, you know, like Bloom's voice is just came out of that character's mouth. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just wild to see like all of these like actors, like portraying these characters that like I've grown up with. It was just very interesting. Like it's, it was no longer just like my little corner of like the world. Like it's mm. like, a big deal you know what I mean like yes. I don't know like Winx Club was always so personal to me because it was only my thing like it wasn't yes. like huge in America it I didn't have a lot of friends into it the one friend that I had that was into it obviously grew out of it and so like it was just very very personal and so seeing I don't know like seeing the characters interact like in in live action like it's just very magical and like very very new like a, it just kind of like revitalized it all for me I also felt like um when Wings was airing and also people around me who know that I like Wings were like did you already hear Netflix is having a series with Wings and I was like yes I know it since one, se like, one year I, like, yeah. I like I've been for like two years bitch. Asking? <laughs> and um I also felt like oh. that people like this is so weird to say but I felt like that well I don't know were coming into my personal space ah yeah like I I felt like I had to share the past 17 <sighs> years with stranger yeah. who are like now pretending to be wings fans and I'm like who are you, you <laughs> Italy with the magic land did right you, did you do you know about 15 years of wings exhibition right like <laughs> oh I know I know all these fake fans out here but like I mean to each their own like everyone has their own wings yeah. journey and I understand that and the fate like saga has honestly like brought a lot of people back into the fandom like Mickey Little um shared with me like she got back into the fandom really like hardcore after like season eight and um and the announcement of the wink saga like It was, um, so it's bringing a lot of people back to the fandom, but also, it's also introducing a lot of people to Winx Club in general, which is really, I mean, really honestly, like a really exciting thing um, mm. because because we, as the original Winxers, get to introduce them to this whole magical world. And yes. like, how exciting. Welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome in my, in my museum. Is it called museum? <laughs> yeah, your, your Winx Club museum. <laughs> I love it man yeah. that's incredible and Would also I feel like sorry I also feel like we are having like two communities the yeah. fate and the wings community and sometimes I feel like in between like I'm, I don't know <laughs> like I'm both yeah I know and, and that's the thing you absolutely can be both like you can't yeah. like you can like both of them and and still like the original show but still enjoy fate and still like recognize the problems that it faces like you know, you can, you can do all of that. I feel like, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. By the way, did you know that, um, another fun fact, <laughs> did you know that Sky's father and fate, Andreas 
is a German actor. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yes. His name is uh, Ken Duken. Well, um, gosh, thank you again so much for being on today and for taking some time out of your day to talk about our favorite fairy show with me. You're welcome. Um, it was super fun. Um hearing just your experience um growing up with it in Germany and um comparing it to kind of mine um where can our listeners find you online they can find me on Instagram and on YouTube with the username fairy of magics awesome well great well go check out uh Stella's content um it's really cool seeing her collection um maybe one day she will give us a tour of her Winx Club Museum on her channel (laughs) And we will catch you guys next time. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of the Wings for Revac podcast, be sure to follow or subscribe to the show on your preferred streaming platform to be notified when new episodes drop. Join in on the conversation when you follow at Wings for Revac podcast on social media. The theme for the Wings Forever podcast is the song She Makes Magic by Big Wild. Mm-hmm.